Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Harwood. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Toronto in the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research, studying under the supervision of Dr. Philip Awadala. My research is titled Increased Allele-Specific Expression in Blood Can Be Beneficial for Immune Response in Healthy Agers. One general question in human genetics and evolution of genetics is why do individuals with the same genotype still display such highly variable phenotypes? And of course, there's so many aspects that can go into this, but one of which is the regulation of gene expression. One way we can study the regulation of gene expression is through a phenomenon called allele-specific expression, or ASE. And this is where at a heterozygous position, where there are two different alleles, the expression of those two alleles may not be equal. This can be important in a phenotype or disease context. In this example here, let's say the individual on the top, they have allele 1, allele 2, where allele 1 in red is deleterious or disease associated. This individual shows overexpression of this allele and therefore may have the disease or be at high risk of the disease. Whereas on the bottom, with a different individual but has the exact same genotype, they still have that disease associated mutation, but they have underexpression of that mutation perhaps they'll be healthy or at least a lower risk of that disease. Now, there are many phenotypes that we can look at in humans that are highly variable, but one that is particularly interesting to people is aging. And this is because although everyone ages, it is still highly variable with respect to some individuals being healthy agers, where they can go long lives without developing any chronic illness or be at low risk of mortality compared to unhealthy agers. But it's currently known that there's an increase in ASC with age. And this was studied in 2019, looking at a longitudinal study where they sampled individuals at 70 years old and then the same individuals again at 80 years old. And they found that there was overall an increase in ASC with age, specifically a 2.6% increase in ASC over this 10 year period. Now, although we see that there's this overall increase in ASC with age, the question remains of, is this ASC contributing at all to why some individuals are healthy agers compared to other unhealthy agers? This is the question that my research is trying to answer, which is, does ASC contribute to the phenotypic variation observed during aging? To investigate this, we're using a population cohort from Canada called CAMPATH or the Canadian Partnership for Tomorrow's Health. Specifically, two regions within this cohort, Cartagen, which is the French-Canadian cohort, and the Ontario Health Study. In Cartagen, we have 832 individuals, and for Ontario Health Study, we have 350. All individuals are from blood samples. In Cartagen, we have bulk RNA sequencing, which is very common in testing ASE, where we compare the read count from each allele to each other. In Ontario Health Study, we still have RNA sequencing, but it's actually at a single cell resolution. And so for our analyses, we're testing it first in a pseudobulk context uh, to compare it to our cartogen. And then we also can look at sort of a single cell resolution. We've actually found that it's most effective to group cells based on the involvement of adaptive immunity versus innate immunity. This increases our power to detect ASC while still remaining a single cell resolution. We also use a risk score for this mortality risk that we can use for testing these healthy aging mechanism. This is previously developed and published uh, using a complete blood count variables to predict all cause mortality. And so this allows us to have individuals that are young, less than 45 years old, age greater than 65 years old, but also the low versus high risk from this mortality risk score. In addition to the risk score, we also have some individuals with known diagnosed diseases. For example, in Cartagen, we have individuals with cancer, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and dyslipidemia. In Ontario, although at the time of sampling, all individuals were healthy with respect to disease or no known diagnosis of disease, we do have 22 individuals who have been diagnosed with cancer since having their blood sampled. And so we actually have 22 pre-cancer samples, a sort of snap, snapshot of their DNA uh, before they've actually been diagnosed. So to get into some of the results, this is confirming which was previously published where we see this significant increase in ASE with age. Although when we look at our OHS, this sort of single cell resolution, we also confirm this increase in ASE with age. We observe that it's primarily observed in those adaptive immune cells. Now, when we split up 
our individuals based on their risk score, we observe still that there's an increase in ASE with age, but actually that low risk individuals have a larger increase in ASE with age compared to high risk. This is observed across the two cohorts, as well as in innate and adaptive immune cells. So the next question we had was, what could be driving this? Is there any specific gene category that might be influencing this increase in ASE with age, specifically in our low risk individuals? To test this, we've stratified ASE events into whether they're common versus rare. So common is found in more than 10% of these heterozygous individuals, and rare is found in less than 10%. And what we observe is that common ASE is often in genes involved in immune response and immune processes, whereas rare is often involved in sort of regulation of metabolic processes. And we actually see an increase in common ASC in our aged individuals. So this brings us back to this original question. Could these genes involved in immune response and immune processes possibly be driving this pattern of increased ASC with age in our low risk individuals? So to test this, we stratified individuals based on the proportion of ASC in immune genes specifically. So this is the number of significant sites in immune genes over the total number of heterozygous sites in immune genes for that specific individual. Then we stratified out individuals with a higher than average proportion of ASC in immune genes and asked, are they more likely to be low risk? And the answer is yes. Aged individuals with a higher than average proportion of ASC in immune genes are more likely to be low risk as shown in this odds ratio plot. So this suggests that ASC specifically in immune genes may be beneficial for healthy aging. The next part of our investigation looked at these known diagnosed diseases, specifically in cardigan, which is type 2 diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and cancer. Now to start with our cardiometabolic traits, and I've shown this risk score plot again on the left as a comparison, we still see this increase in ASC with age in our normal, those blue lines, but in our disease, and specifically for hypertension and type 2 diabetes, we actually see a dramatic change where we actually now see a decrease in ASC with age in these disease individuals. Now when we add cancer, uh, both our known cancer diagnoses in Cartagen, but also those pre-cancer samples from OHS, we actually see a shift where we see this increase in ASC is actually stronger in those that are diagnosed with cancer. And there could be a few things that go, are going on here. One could be a tissue-specific mechanism. Uh, these are just grouping any known cancers we have due to sample size. Uh, however, there could be tissue-specific uh, results if, if perhaps we looked at the, the tissue where the, the tumor arises. Mm -hmm. uh, another important aspect that I think could be involved here is the involvement in immunity. I've previously shown in the last few slides that the immune genes are possibly influencing this pattern of increased ASC in our low-risk individuals. However, cancer and immunity have a significant overlap, so perhaps these immune genes are playing a role differently in our cancer cases. The last aspect I want to touch on for this presentation is sort of an environmental or extrinsic factor that may be influencing ASC, and this is medication or treatment. Now, for many studies exploring ASC with disease, they often ignore or don't control for the fact that individuals could be treated for these diseases. And so in Cartagen, specifically for our three metabolic traits, we have information whether they, one, are diagnosed with the disease, two, are medicated for the disease, whether they're even being medicated for more than one of these diseases, and of course, their ASC profiles. And what we observe, and this is looking at the total proportion of ASC sites across individuals who are not medicated, taking one medication, two medications, or three medications. And of course, there's a lot to go on here, but what I really want you to take away are these three boxes. These boxes show a significant increase in the proportion of ASC sites compared to the other treatment groups. And these are individuals that are taking treatment for hypertension, dyslipidemia, or both hypertension and dyslipidemia. So this suggests that individuals taking those two medication types have a significant increase in ASC, but this is regardless of the response to the medication. Solely just taking the medication shows this increase in ASC. So this is showing us that it's very important to take this into account 
in the future studies of looking at ASE with diseases. It also opens the opportunity for possible personalized medicine approaches looking at ASE with these medication and treatments. So to summarize, I've raised this question, does ASE contribute to the phenotypic variation observed during aging? I've showed that low-risk individuals have a larger increase in ASE with age, and that this may be driven by immune genes, specifically because we see increased ASE in immune genes may actually be beneficial for healthy agers. I demonstrated that increased ASC during aging may reduce risk of cardiometabolic traits, but we actually saw differences in our cancer and pre-cancer samples, possibly due to tissue-specific effects or the involvement in immune genes. And lastly, I showed the importance of medication impacting ASC regulation in disease individuals, specifically where we saw individuals taking hypertension or dyslipidemia medications have a significant increase in ASC showing that it's important to take this into account in the future studies of ASC and disease. And with that, I would like to finish by thanking my lab. So thank you to my supervisor, Dr. Philip Awadala. The entire Awadala lab shown here, specifically those highlighted in bold, have a direct impact on this project. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me here and for listening.